On this page of notes, we're going to now talk about reversing the process and going from an acceleration graph to a velocity graph. So here we are having acceleration put on the y-axis. We have time, of course, remaining on the x-axis. And when we go from an acceleration graph to a velocity graph. We let our equations guide us in terms of what we are doing to confirm our uh, calculation for either a slope or an area, and in this case we can see that it is an area calculation we are making because A equals, as it shows here, let's let our equations guide us, A equals delta V divided by delta T, so delta V is the velocity information we're going to be getting from the A information that we have. So since the graphical representation of acceleration versus time uh, puts acceleration on the y-axis or my height axis puts delta t on my base axis, height times base equals area, and it is absolutely important, so please make sure you get this down into your notes, that you have the positive or negative uh, with the acceleration. So when calculating areas to do our, our transposing graphs, going from one graph to another, it is really important that whatever your favorite color is, you highlight the zero line, that horizontal, in this case acceleration equals zero line, because that tells us the areas that we are calculating. So in this case, we are calculating the area based on the height and base from the function. So the height here is my a, the base is my delta t, from the function to that horizontal zero line. So that's my change in velocity. And remember that I'm always calculating, we are always calculating, delta v, not an actual velocity value. So we have to be given the initial value, as we are given here, at time t equals 0 to be, up, to be able to make the, the graph that we're going to make below. So the change in velocity over the first time interval is plus 6. Plus, because the acceleration is positive above that horizontal 0 line, it is negative below the horizontal line, so that's why my delta v3 is going to be negative 4. My delta v4 is also negative 4. And regardless of whether I'm calculating the area above the horizontal line or the areas below the horizontal line, it is always from the function to the horizontal line, and I let my positive or negative for my height dictate the positive or negative answers. As always, show a representative calculation, and then you can just show the numbers after that. So my velocity graph, anytime we're using area to calculate a graph, we're basically connecting the dots. So I have my delta v's nicely calculated above. I know my initial velocity is negative 8. And then I went up 6, my delta v. I increased by 6. So I don't go to position 6. It's connect the dots after you increase by 6. So negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Negative 2. 2 plus 12 goes up to positive 10, connect the dot, and then I go down 4, connect the dot, and then down another 4, connect the dot. So there you have it. That was pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty standard when we're going from an acceleration to a velocity graph. We are going to work with area, the delta, the delta v's when you recall we went from a velocity graph to a position graph, then we got delta x's, same exact concept. And when eventually we do calculus, we'll understand these area calculations as integration. So short page of notes, hopefully that makes sense to you based on what we've done up to this point, and we will move on.